Hello, my name is David Wood, and today I'm presenting our work on automated triaging of head MRI examinations using convolutional neural networks. So this study sort of represents the culmination of a couple of years' work for us, um, and it involved a large multidisciplinary team, which included data scientists, neuroradiologists, and other clinicians, and it was led primarily by James Cole and Thomas Booth. The background to our study is the growing demand for head MRI examinations, which, along with a global shortage of radiologists, has led to an increase in the time taken to report head MRI scans around the world. In the UK, for example, the reporting time for outpatient scans has increased year on year since 2012, and it's estimated that at any given moment, more than 300,000 patients are waiting over a month for their reports. Now, for serious neurological conditions, so acute strokes, tumors, and so on, this delay can result in much poorer patient outcomes, increased mortality, and higher um, healthcare costs. Now, one possible solution to reduce reporting times for abnormal scans is to develop an AI-based triage tool, which can identify abnormalities at the time of imaging and then prioritize the reporting of these scans. And of course, convolutional neural networks show considerable promise for this purpose. But a bottleneck to model development is the difficulty of obtaining sufficiently large clinically representative labeled data sets to enable supervised learning. And this is because, you know, basically labeling MRI scans is a complex, laborious task, it requires considerable domain knowledge and expertise. In other words, you really need a neuroradiologist to do it. But of course, it's very difficult to justify this given the um, existing workforce shortages. In recent years, however, uh, breakthroughs in natural language processing, particularly the release of large pre-trained transformer-based models such as BERT and BioBERT, have made it feasible to derive accurate categorical labels from radiology reports and then assign these to the corresponding images at scale, effectively automating the dataset labeling process. So we've spent the last two years developing such a tool. Uh, we presented this at middle last year, and an extended version has just been accepted for publication in European radiology. And this tool very much uh, facilitated the current study. Right, so how do we use this model? Well, first we obtained all 54,115 axial T2 weighted head MRI scans, which have been performed at King's College Hospital and Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital, UK, uh, over a 10 year period between 2008 and 2019. And we also uh, obtained the corresponding radiology reports. Then uh, using our report classifier, each examination was labeled as normal or abnormal. Uh, therefore, thereby generating a large labeled data set suitable for training a computer vision model at scale. Now, our definitions of normal and, and abnormal uh, were rigorously created by our clinical team during meetings over the course of uh, six months. And if you're interested, there's a 10-page supplement in the European Radiology paper where they are described in all their glory. But briefly, findings which were generated downstream clinical intervention uh, were labeled abnormal as were those which would be referred for case discussion at a multi multidisciplinary team meeting, and uh, basically everything else was labeled normal. Okay, so on the computer vision side, we trained two models, uh, a, a baseline sort of vanilla dense net, and then a noise corrected dense net. Now our motivation for this is that, uh, you know, even though our report classifier is highly accurate, I mean, after all it achieved an area under the RSE curve of 0.992 on a holdout test set of reports from an external hospital, you know, some small fraction of images will still be ultimately mislabeled. And this is on the order of three to 5%. Now, this isn't a huge deal. I mean, ImageNet itself has been estimated to have a noise level of up to even 10%. Um, but, uh, but for our application, you know, every little bit counts. So we tried to correct the noise as much as possible. And you can read more about the noise correction strategy in detail in the paper. But the upshot is that uh, we re excuse me, we reweight the predicted probabilities during training using a transition matrix whose entries specify the class conditional probability of label flipping. So that's, you know, for example, the probability that a given image, which has been labeled abnormal, should have been labeled normal and, and vice versa. And we actually estimate the matrix elements using the known false positive and false negative rates, which were determined as part of NLP model validation. And this encourages the model basically to learn the true rather than the noisy label distribution. And then of course at test time, when reliable ground truth labels are available and noise correction isn't needed, the transition matrix is set to the identity matrix and everything's just like normal. 
Right, so a couple of other things. Uh, we included patient age as input to the model as this allowed age conditional classifications. Um, now this is important because some findings, you know, such as scattered white matter hyperintensities, mild atrophy, uh, et cetera, are commonly observed as part of healthy aging. So these should be classified as normal. Uh, but at this, but you know, the same findings in younger patients would be considered radiologically abnormal. Um, we also didn't perform skull stripping, uh, and this was in order to enable the detection of important extracranial abnormalities, which would otherwise be masked as part of the skull, stri skull stripping process. Um, okay, so for model testing, we used 800 examinations, which had been manually labeled by two neuroradiologists who inspected the actual images. Uh, these images were randomly sampled across the entire 10 year period and contained a wide range of morphologically distinct abnormalities. So this included high and low grade tumors, cysts, aneurysms, strokes, hemorrhages, Alzheimer's type dementias, small vessel diseases and extracranial abnormalities, so optic nerve atrophy and, and so on. Basically the test set was representative of a real world clinical triage environment. Now the best model, which was trained and tested on scans pulled together from both sites, achieved an AUC of 0.943. Uh, importantly, the models generalized between sites. So when trained on scans from one hospital, the models generalized to scans from the other with only a small drop in performance. And uh, ultimately noise correction led to a small but statistically significant improvement. And to quantify the impact that our model would have, would have in, a, in a real clinical setting, uh, we performed a retrospective simulation study using all outpatient examinations performed at KCH and GSET over a one-year period, starting, at, starting on 1st of January uh, 2018 and going up to 31st of December 2018. And the idea here was to determine what would have happened if our model had been used to suggest the order in which head MRI examinations were reported rather than reporting being done sequentially, as was the case historically. And the results are quite promising. Uh, reporting time for abnormal scans was, was reduced from 28 days to 14 days at GSTT and from nine days to five days at KCH. Now, obviously, a decrease in abnormal reporting times means that there's a corresponding increase in time to report normal scans. So false negative classifications are a concern. Uh, but our team, our clinical team, that is, have been through these and found that, uh, you know, in the very few cases where our model does make classification errors, these were uh, overwhelmingly borderline examples of abnormalities, which are probably best described in terms of a continuum, uh, but which we had elected to binarize to enable classification. So, for example, minor, mild or modest small vessel disease is considered radiologically normal and was always correctly classified by our model. Uh, likewise, moderate or severe small vessel disease is, is radiologically abnormal and was again always correctly classified. Uh, but equivocal cases where the reporting radiologists sort of sat on the fence, so for example, reported it as mild to moderate, um, and our team actually labeled these as abnormal to encourage model sensitivity. These were sometimes misclassified. But given the degree of subjectivity involved, you know, these errors are highly unlikely to have a significant clinical impact. But nonetheless, you know, as part of our future work, we plan to investigate the use of regression uh, rather than binary classification to model these uh, particular abnormalities. Okay, so interpretability is also clearly important for any clinical decision tool. Uh, it engenders trust and in the context of automated triage, uh, it could enable some sort of quick real-time review uh, by a radiologist before committing to you know, putting a scan in a prioritized reporting queue. Uh, so using guided back propagation, we were able to automatically generate slice-wise and voxel-wise visualizations of image regions which most influence the model's predictions. And uh, importantly, this interpretive method the, these, these heat maps were basically sensitive to cases where multiple findings are, are present, which is, which is quite nice. Right, so as part of future work, we plan to develop a third category of emergency diagnoses, and that's to finesse the triage process further, because at the moment, um, you know, we don't really triage on the basis of urgency or criticality. So currently, you know, for example, stroke and atrophy would be considered equally abnormal, and that this is a limitation. 
Um, however, UK hospitals, uh, NHS hospitals at least, require that all emergency MRI scans be reported within 24 hours, so that you know the benefit of a third category in our healthcare system at least is, is probably likely to be to be modest, but nonetheless worth investigating. Uh, we also plan to include additional MRI sequences into our models, so maybe diffusion weighted or susceptibility weighted images. And ideally, the, the ultimate model would be robust to, to missing sequences and so on. And finally, we're considering the possibility of actually removing scans, which the model very confidently predicts to be normal from the reporting queue. Uh, of course, this will you know, further reduce the abnormal reporting times and, and additionally help to clear any historical backlogs. But of course, there are a host of issues to iron out before we can be sure that something like this is, uh, is actually feasible. Right, so in conclusion, we've presented an accurate head abnormality classifier, which is trained at scale using the neuroradiology report classifier to label the images. And we've shown that our model would reduce the reporting times for abnormal examinations at two large UK hospitals, demonstrating we think feasibility as an automated triage tool. And with that, I thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.